During the 19th century, clocks on posts became popular across America. Railways were spreading fast, and these public clocks helped people get to their trains on time. Today, post clocks are often designed to look like they're old, but the technology that goes into making them is actually very up-to-date. It all starts with the transfer sheet, which is positioned over an aluminium disc that'll become the clock's dial. The sheet is removed and a chemical is sprayed on. The chemical will act as a release agent, detaching the vinyl numbers from the sheet so they transfer and stick to the dial. The sheet is peeled off. This worker prepares a more elaborate model with numerals in 23 karat gold leaf. After they're coated with glue, she applies a hair-thin sheet of gold. The gold is brushed onto the numeral. A computer-guided cutter cuts a half a centimetre thick sheet of aluminium into a clock hand that's nearly a metre long. To boost the hand's rigidity, it's creased in a press. This reinforces the metal, helping retain the hand's shape over time. A counterweight will balance the hand when it rotates. Here, a welder builds the post by fusing a base and column made of cast aluminium. On another model, workers attach the housing for the clock head. This clock will have four dials, other models have two. In the paint shop, the base, column and head get four coats of paint. Lubricant is applied on a steel shaft called a stud and one of the clock's eight brass gears is installed. A steel loop called a snap ring holds each gear in place. One gear has what's called a vein to regulate the pulsing of the gears. Next, the shaft and gear that will control the minute hand are attached. Altogether, the gears form the clock's movement. A brass backplate is screwed on to hold the clock movement in place. An electronic circuit board is attached. A 115 volt motor is installed. And finally, wires are connected and the clock's movement is turned. Everything is checked to see that it's properly linked and that the gears are moving well. This company makes movements for clocks ranging in diameter from just 22 centimetres to more than 9 metres. The gears in the largest clock are nearly a metre wide. Here, you can see how the shaft that'll hold the minute hand revolves inside what's called the sleeve of the hour hand. A worker attaches the clock movement to the back of a dial. Then he ties wires through what are called glass standoffs. These standoffs will cradle the clock's neon light. The neon tube encircles the clock's perimeter. It attaches through holes to a transformer hidden behind the dial. The tube is fastened with rust-resistant copper wires. Next come the hour and minute hands, now painted black. They are attached to the hand hub. This hub holds the hands on the shaft that's part of the clock movement. The assembled dial now goes into its casing. The casing has two parts, an aluminium ring called a bezel around a glass cover known as a crystal. A wire is connected to link the dials so they'll move in sync. The worker then inserts this casing into what will be a two-dial post clock. The light is tested. Once the post clock's installed, a built-in sensor turns the light on at dusk and off at dawn. Inside every clock is a controller that sets the time. It's linked to a satellite through a global positioning system. After starting up, the controller takes six minutes to adjust the hands to the exact time. Determined from Greenwich in England. This company's post clocks can stand more than six meters high and can cost thousands of pounds, lending a whole new meaning to the phrase, time is money.
No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fake is. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up.